Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Reincarnated Radio Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Stishon, and once again, I'm bringing you another one of the scariest, creepiest, and most skin-crawling tales of terror that the golden age of radio had to offer. For this episode, we go lights out once again as a woman discovers the true peril of when a dollar bill is valued over a human life, and if there's a way back from it. Today, the cast of Katie Vaughn, Lacey Jo Sloat, and myself reincarnate Profits Unlimited, which originally aired on July 20th, 1943. So turn off the lights, gather round, and if you get scared, just remember, these tales scared your grandpappy first, and enjoy the Reincarnated Radio Podcast. It, it just doesn't make sense. Don't it, miss? Why must you row me there? I told you, miss. No boat can get past that reef. But surely my grandfather can afford a powerboat. Last one sank five years ago. Then why doesn't he... Oh, what's the use of asking any more questions? I've asked and I've asked and every answer just gets me more mixed up than I was before. It's all very simple, miss. Simple? It's all just a question of money. What do you mean... Money. Ten generations the Cordays have lived and died on the island, and it's all just a matter of money. But my father... Yes, yes, yes. All but your father. He was the one they called the fool. Mr. Williams, I don't think you've any right. It isn't a matter of right or wrong, miss. It's what they said. How much further is there to go? I can't see. Yes, yes. The mist is always heavy this time of the morning. Well, we'll be there soon enough. It's all a matter of money. Ugh, why don't you talk words that mean something? You're like my father was. He could talk perfectly sanely about anything in the world, but the moment I spoke about the island and my ancestors, then there wasn't any clarity or logic anymore. Why don't you tell me what it's all about? There's nothing to tell you that you won't know when we get there. Tell me something. The sun's rising. The mist will lift. Look, Mr. Williams... For 15 years, ever since I've been old enough to know what it's all about, I've been trying to get some information about my family. All I know is that for generations, the Cordays have lived on this island. While my father was alive, I could never come here. But now he's dead, and I'm here, and I've got to know something about them. Anything. Yes, so that when I meet my grandfather, I'll know a little of what it's all about. Please, tell me. It's all a matter of... Don't say that again. Tell me something that means something to me. Rowing in the middle of nowhere, I'll tell you. I... Wait. Ahead. If you'll just look ahead of you. Land! Island always comes on sudden. So many trees. They're always green. You're not rowing, and yet we move. There's always a current. I... I've waited so long to get here. I... We're moving so swiftly. What? Why, there's a landing pier. Aye, hold on. We'll bump. Now I'll hold it if you'll jump. All right. You, you stand there, please. Wait for me. No one here. My, my grandfather, where is he? Are you afraid already? Afraid? Well, why should I? Of course I'm not. But they knew I was coming here. My grandfather, why isn't he- To the trees. Look, you want clear answers? There's one of them. Chimneys. Smoke. Factories? Yes, they are factories, aren't they? Aye. But factories? Here? They've stood there for ten generations. But on an island in the middle of- Why here? It's all a matter of money. What? Uh, tell me! Three hundred and thirty years ago- Pierre Corday came to this island and built them up. But, but why here? I'm telling you. I've been telling you all along. A matter of money. You know what money is. Well, it's been the day and the night and the sun and the moon of your family for as long as there's been one of you. Money. And here was the making of it. And the horror of it. But why? Let me tell you. 
and you wanted to know, let me tell you quick. His profits weren't big enough, Pierre Corday thought to himself, and the trouble was with the men in the factories, he decided. They wanted too much. They wanted shorter hours, more money, and this and that. If he could get men who'd never want but only work, then he got an idea. If he could find a place where only he'd be the boss, where there'd be no organizers and investigators and boards of arbitration, then he'd tell the men what to do and they'd do it, and up with the profits and out with the headaches. And an island, aye, a private island, that was the answer. And that was it? Aye. Beyond the jurisdiction of any man but one of the name of Corday. So here he moved his factories, machine after machine, and when everything was set up, he sent out to the places where men walked the streets, looking for work, and he said, Listen to me, you single ones. You're hungry, so listen to me. I have a place where there's work for you. Easy work. Work at the machines. You sit all day and you don't have to think. The machines think for you. Just sit all day and do the same thing over and over and over. And I'll pay you well. And I'll pay you regular. Aye, a life job if you'll do what I say for all your lives. And, and men came here? Why not? There was plenty in those days tired of worrying about bread and a place to sleep. So they said to themselves, the devil with the city. We'll go where he says as long as there's food and there's drink. So here they came. Five hundred picked ones, all set for life jobs in the factories of Pierre Corday. My grandfather! Take me to him! And the things the machines was making were shipped all over the world. And the profits began coming in fast because now the machines were working at a price that was right for Pierre Corday. But the workers had life jobs, so for a while it was all right. And at first everybody in the world was talking about the factory on the island. But the months and the years went by, and the world forgot. But the machines kept on running, and the money kept on coming in. But why is there smoke coming out of the factories now? Five hundred of them. And they sat down at the machines and started working, and Pierre Corday bought women for them to mate with. And my kin was with them. And the machines started turning. But the factories, they're still working. Why? Listen, you wanted me to tell you. So listen, listen to the rest. Three hundred and thirty years ago, and each had his own bit of work at the machines. One had to press a lever here, the other to turn a screw here. Same work, hour after hour, day after day. And the months went by and the profits kept coming in. But some of them began to get tired of it. Tired of the machines. Fools they were from the start. Pierre Corday picked them that way. Still. They got tired. They wanted to get back to the change in life of the rest of the world. Give us hunger, they said, but give us change. They said that, but they didn't get what they wanted. Then why didn't they go away? Where? To drown at sea? Some did. But my great, great, whatever he was, why didn't they go to him? Some did. The answer was work or starve. Then why didn't they rebel? Some did that and died for the trying. Died? Aye. Money can always buy men who will kill. They say that of the five hundred men who came here, at the end of two years, half of them had fattened the sharks in the harbor. It isn't possible. Aye. It all is impossible. An island in the middle of nowhere with spinning machines and men at them? None of it's possible. But here it is. Three hundred and thirty years old and still the same as it was. You mean in those factories are... What? What? Watch. People. Marching. Who, who are they? Tenth generation of them Pierre Corday brought and kept here. The way they walk. Heads down. Arms hanging. Men like... My grandfather! Take me to him! Take you to him? Yes! Take me to my grandfather! Your grandfather's dead. Dead? The island, and they, belong to you.
Believe me now? His grave is so... so new. Two weeks. I buried him myself. Did he send for me before he... No. It was me. You? Me. I knew that you were the last of them left, and I wanted you to be here. But... but why? I said it, didn't I? You're the last Corday. 330 years, and you're the last. Why is the factory working so late? That's the second shift. There's two a day. All night? Aye. But why? It's been that way for 330 years. It's not true, none of it. I won't listen to you anymore. Wait, where are you going, girl? Down there. But you can't go there now. I'm going to the factory. Talk to them. Find out the truth. They won't like it. What are you talking about? They don't like to be disturbed when they're working. They've been trained to keep working. The rhythm of production, your grandfather called it. They don't like to be stopped. But I don't believe you. I'm going to find out for myself. All right. All right. Find out for yourself. Talk to them. Row on row of men and women and children. Why not the children? The more hands, the more production. That was the law of the Cordays, the law of the island. Their faces, empty. Machines do the thinking. But they sit so quietly, not talking, none of them. Williams, why is that? Crouching over their tools like, like animals. Are they always like this? When the whistle blows, they eat. When it blows again, they march back to the barracks behind the factory. Barracks? Aye, barracks. Kennels. Name it what you want. That's where they live. Live until after 12 hours, the whistle calls them back to work. But the children... I told you the children do like the rest. They work as soon as they can walk. That's always been the law of the Cordays for over 300 years without change. It's the only law they know. Look at this worker, Miss Corday. What is he making? Look at his face. Lovely thing, ain't it? And his blood is the same as their blood, mixed together all through the factory. Look at them, Miss Corday. Yours. Yours, I tell you. Yours and all yours. To sit here at the machines until the flesh rots from their bones and they drop in their places. You inherit them. A thousand of them. Aren't you proud of your inheritance? What is he making? What does it matter what they're making? The things they're making ain't been shipped from this island in a hundred years. What? Aye. For a hundred years they've been at the machines. But it's like a dog chasing his tail, without beginning and end. What comes out of the last machine is brought back to the first machine and broken up and started all over again. Nobody wants what they're making, and nobody gets why they're making it. And as far as the thousand of them are concerned, all that matters in life is that what's been trained in the blood. They can do it over and over and over. I ask you again, Miss Corday. Aren't you proud of your inheritance? Why don't they stop? Stop? How can you stop a rhythm that's been in the blood for ten generations? Why don't they talk? Mmm, you're scared now, Miss Corday. They'll talk to me. Of course they will. Uh, this one. This one. You. Uh, I beg your pardon. Would you stop work a moment and talk to me? I said, would you stop work a moment and talk to me? Williams, he doesn't hear me. He hears you. Then why doesn't he even turn his head? Not him. Not any of them. I don't believe you. This woman, she'll... Lady? Would you please stop work and talk to me? Lady, talk to me. I'm Dale Corday. I... You're scared, all right. I insist that you talk to me. Doesn't answer. I told you. Not while they work. Oh, your family bred them right. Bred? Yes. Like you breed dogs the way you want them. Pierre Corday's idea. And it worked. Yes. Look at him and see how it worked. You see that one? Long fingers for delicate work. And this one? Hands of him tough enough to reach right into the forge. Yes. For 330 years, bred to sit and work and no nonsense. Never to talk up for their rights, just sit and work the way they're told. You stand there looking at me, 
And you don't believe me, do you? Well, try to get them to stop to work. Try to get them to say something to you. Try to get them to act like human beings. Well, they're not human beings. They're workers. Yes, workers for the family of Corday. And what are you going to do about it? Don't be afraid of me. Who? You? I'm Dale Corday. Corday. Boss. Please don't tremble. I... What's your name? Josa. Josa what? Josa. Do you... Uh... You like it here? Like... Like? Like work here. No complaints. Like work here. No complaints. Like work... No, no, stop. They taught you that very well, didn't they? Like work here. No complaints. Wouldn't you like to leave this place? Sail away across the sea? Like work here. No complaints. Don't keep saying that. You don't understand what you say, do you? Look at me. Lift your face. Wouldn't you like to leave the factory and do what you please? Like work here. You've got to understand. You've got to talk to me. Why, why you're the only one I see that has anything in her face. Oh, Josa, look at me! No, don't hang your head. Look at me! I'm your friend. I want to know about you. Don't be afraid. Talk to me. That pretty flower in your hair. What is it? The flower. What's it called? What's its name? Joe, forget. It's very pretty. What do you do in the factory, Josa? What is your work? Like work here. No complaints. Yes. Would you like to take a walk with me? Walk? Yes, through the valley and show me the flowers. No, no walk. Why not? Whistle blow soon. Work begin. You don't have to work if you don't want to. Come on. No, whistle blow soon. But I tell you, it's all right. You don't have to go. No, I go. But I want you to stay here. You will stay here. No, no, let Joe go. Must work. Whistle. Whistle blow. You'll stay here and talk to me. You'll stay. I'm only trying Let to help. Let Joe go. Whistle blow. Late. Let go. Ah! Joe late. Joe late. Joe's late. Well, now you'll believe. I told you what would happen. Uh, she, she bit me. Like an animal. When the whistle blows, they go back to work. That's the law. It's in their blood. In their blood. In their blood. In their blood. I've had enough of this talk. And what are you going to do about it? Close the factories. What? Yes. Close them. Lock them up. Shut them out. You think you can do that? You'll do it for me. Will I? Tonight. Between shifts. Lock and bolt the doors. You say the rhythm of the factories in their blood. All right, I'll stop it. You hear me, Williams? You'll close the factory tonight. Well? Well? Well, it's done. Good. Tomorrow you'll start me back to the mainland. I'll make arrangements to get those people off of here. Will you now? You're breathing so heavily. Soon as I locked the doors, I ran all the way back. Why? I wanted to see your face. What? I wanted to see your face after the whistle blows. Whistle? Aye. It'll blow just as always. But I told you And that... I did. I locked the factory. Shut the big doors and threw the bolts. But the whistle's at the powerhouse, and some of them are always there. Aye, the whistle will blow, and they'll march to work. But they won't get in. Aye, here they come. You'll start me to the mainland very early tomorrow, Williams. It's a long way. 
I know it. I know it. But it's got to be done. You've a sale? Tonight I'm putting an end to their marching. Tomorrow I'll... What's that? Williams, don't you hear it? I... I hear it. It's from the factory. I... As if they were... As if they were breaking down the door. I... Yes, that's what they're doing. Williams, don't stand there. Go stop them. Tell them the factory's closed forever. Tell them it's ended. Go tell them yourself. They've broken in. Gone back to work. People! People, stop working and listen to me. Stop working, I tell you. I've got to talk to you. I've got to tell you important things. A little while ago, you broke down the door. But that was because you didn't understand what I was trying to do. And now I want to tell you, so listen to me. My name is Corday, and this factory and an island and everything on it is my inheritance. And I want to close this factory because I want to help you. Help you to begin to live like human beings. Believe me, sitting in a machine for 12 hours a day, doing something that means nothing to you, that isn't all there is to life. Living means using the machines just long enough each day to give you what you need. And the rest of the time should be yours for the things of life. Books to read full of new excitements and understanding, and wonderful music to be played and listened to, and the enjoyment of your homes and conversation and friendship and travel to the world outside this island. Oh, so many things for you to learn and so much life to be lived. I want to give you the time for that. And why not? There aren't any chains holding you to these machines. You can be free from them now. Yes, now and then, you and I, we can work out a new way of life. Oh, you're not listening to me. None of you. People, listen. Why won't you turn away from your machines? Why won't you stop them? I want to help you. Listen to me, please. Just listen to me. Listen to me. All right, then. You'll listen to this. I'm going to burn the factory down. Do you hear me? If that's the only way to stop you, I'm going to burn it down. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Have you everything aboard? Aye. Supplies enough to get the boat there and back twice over. Water? Aye. If there were only some way to communicate to the mainland without going there. There's none. What time is it? Almost seven. And we go when the tide changes? Aye. Wind's freshening. Listen. Listen in the wind. Do you hear it? I hear. What? What do you think? It's them. For two days. Never even going home. They heard you say you'd burn it, and they're afraid. Afraid I'd burn their cage, and so they stay there watching. Watching. One shift works, and the other watches. That's how it is. But not their cage alone, Miss Corday. What do you mean? I mean, it's yours. What? One boat on the island. This. And, in a couple minutes more, it won't be here. What are you talking about? You and I are going- That's where you haven't got it straight, Miss Corday. Going, yes, but only me. I've wanted to ask you this for days now. Why are you always trying to frighten me? The tide's turning. We'd better go. Yes. I've scared you now, haven't I? Well, say it. Say it. Oh, you don't have to. It's in your eyes. Just the thought of being left here with them year after year, 
Nothing but them. Aye, it's enough to turn the insides of you white. Why do you think I sent for you? I'll tell you. And I'll tell you quick. And then I'm off to sea. I sent for you because I'm a man born different than all the rest that there was here. There were three kinds. Workers, servants, and you Cordays. Well, servant I was. But in the borning of me, a piece of hate got in my heart and it kept growing through the years of me. And it's more than I am. A hate for a name and the sound of the name and those that have it. Corday. Well, you're the last of them. And here you'll stay with the sound of them. And the sound of the factory grinding in your ears until you're as old as I am. And the hate for Pierre Corday and the rest of his kind is as old as mine is. The Cordays made their god prophets, and even when they didn't need the prophets, they couldn't stop what they started. Well, you're one of them, and I said before, and I'll say it again. This is your inheritance. An island, and a factory, and a thousand perfect workmen, who will never want anything for themselves except the bit of food they grow, who will sit at your machines until they rot and die. A perfect inheritance for a Corday... I leave it all for you, until you rot and die. Williams! Williams, come back! You don't understand! These people, I want to... Williams! Oh. You cry. Joe! Me, bad. Bad? What do you- Whistle blow. Me no work. Why? Me want show you flower. Oh, my dear. You cry. No, no, I'm not crying. There isn't time. I've so much to tell you. You first, and then the others. One by one. You talk. First, I want to tell you of freedom. Say it. Freedom. Freedom. Three hundred years ago, my people and your people gave it up. My people wanted profits, but they lost their freedom to the machinery they set up to give them those profits. Your people wanted the security of a bare existence and so, too, gave up their rights as men to the machinery of profit. But now you've got to win that freedom back again for all of us. Come, we'll go to them. I've... I've so much to try and tell them. Things that I understand now. That freedom is the essence of the good life for all men. And that security without freedom is a sham which turns men into regiments of less than men. I've so much to tell them. So much to tell them. And that concludes our reincarnation of Prophets Unlimited from Lights Out and another episode of the Reincarnated Radio Podcast. I'd like to thank my cast for helping me bring this strip back to life. And new episodes of the Reincarnated Radio Podcast can be found every Thursday on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram so you never miss an announcement. And don't forget to leave us a review. Tell us what you think. Hopefully we raised a hair or two. But for now, that's it for me, Dave Stishin, and the rest of us at the Reincarnated Radio Podcast, where we scared your grandpappy first. (laughs) 